Welcome back, everybody. My name is Tim. This is another Real Ideal Gear Review. Today, we're looking at a Wave Scepter watch and its bigger, bolder cousin, another Wave Scepter watch. We have two of them today. We're going to do a throwdown session between the two. And uh, this will be throwdown number two. The first one I did was between the, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, the HDC 700 and the AQS 810. Those were kind of like similar styled watches. Uh, very different inside uh, programs on the module, but Overall, there was a lot of similarities. There was a lot of give and take. Some watches had this, other watches had that. But we're going to do another session with these two wave scepters. And this is the WV58R. I thought it was the 58A. What I bought on Amazon was listed as a 58A. And then they, I get here and I look at the back of the case. It says 58R. So, and there is a difference between the A version and the R version. I'll briefly tell, talk about that when I get into this. And then the other one is the Wave Scepter WV200A. Um, this is the bigger, you know, it, it's more robust as far as some of the, th the things about this watch. But there's some things about this bigger watch on the uh, A200 or the WV200 that I'm not real fond of that actually I like uh, the design on, on this watch a little bit better. So kind of a give and take between these two as well. So let's sit back. We're going to go through the five things we typically go through, which are size, fitment, finish, accuracy, and legibility and light. So let's get started with size. You can see this watch is a little bit smaller than the larger cousin, uh, which is the 200. I'm going to call it the 58 and the 200. All right, so the 58 is obviously the case size is a little bit smaller, and then also it is not nearly as tall. So you get a more compact watch uh, overall. So if you're familiar with the WV200, this is a smaller version, the 58. Um, the wearability on this, I do like it. I like it a lot. I like the fact that the buttons are pretty close to the uh, side of the case. I'm not a huge fan of these kind of buttons anyway because there's just a lot of surface area to press. Um, the F201, uh, similar. I'm constantly, when I grab the, the case, I'm constantly pushing a button on there. It switches modes and all that. So not a huge fan of that style of button, but that's the way it goes. Overall cost of this watch is $27. Nice, cheap watch. Um, it, it does a lot of great things. Wave Scepter means that it has the atomic timekeeping. So if you set this by a window at least once a day, it is going to update the time and you're going to have the most accurate watch every day so long as the battery lives, right? So great, great overall design as far as the size goes, lightweight. Um, there's no ribbing on the inside here, so the, the keeper will slide around a little bit on you. That Just be, pre be prepared for that. And uh, this is what I mean by ribbing. You'll see on the inside of, of this strap that there is some notches in there. That really prevents this, the keeper from sliding around. So that is the difference between the two. Uh, when it comes down to the strap. Now the fitment wise, uh, same as always, Casio holes are a little bit too far apart, which makes it a little bit more difficult to finely tune the fit on the wrist. But I'll, I'll live. I have been living with Casios for decades, so not a big deal overall. Finish, I like the finish. It's got a little shine, a little shimmer to this, uh, some plasticky chrome. You know, it, it has kind of a more refined look to it. It's not your typical Casio black resin plastic case, you know, black resin band. Um, so it's, it's, it's got a little class to it. I like it. It does a good job. And again, it's the right proportions. I like the proportions of this as far as the overall diameter and the height off the wrist. I think it's it's avoiding that chunky watch look. And then you got a little bit of chrome on there. You can wear this, you know, for maybe semi-formal occasions. It's a digital watch. Yeah, but I still think that the shine that you get off of a case like this, a black band like this, um, you can do a lot of a lot of good uh, occasions with this watch, I think. I don't think there's anything that, other than maybe the most formal occasions, I think that probably wouldn't be the best for a digital watch. But hey, you know what? Your watch, your, your show, go ahead and go for it. Um, overall, I think the finish, I like it. I like the finishing of the, the display. What I like about the display and this model versus the other one is the size of everything. Everything is so much more legible. We'll get down to that in a minute, but that has to do with the finishing of the, of the display. It has to do with the segmenting that they have here. Um, it just, it's a much better layout overall. Readability is great. Um, I like that. There's a little bit of like carbon fiber, almost kind of uh, detail in some of these sectional uh, pieces that, that kind of uh, separate these different sections. It has kind of that look to it, a grid pattern almost. Um, 
So I like that, you know, a little bit of color. It just has a, it has a good overall look to it. Now, what about legibility and the light? Legibility is, is great. I love the size of the numbers on the display for the time. I can read the, the date, the month, and then also the year. I'm not a huge fan of the year being on there because to me that's only necessary, you know, right around the end of the year, the beginning of the next year. The day down here, I think it does a better job when it comes down to seeing what the day of the week is, more so than the 200 version. We'll get to that in a minute. But the overall legibility of this watch is incredible. It's awesome. Now, as far as the light goes, it is a good light. You know, you get the dual LEDs in the corners down there. Lights everything up. You'll see some video of that. Um, I think it does a great job. Now, compared to the WV200, um, I think the WV200, because it's electroluminescent, I think it does probably a better job of a more even light across the display. And so for that reason, I'd probably give it to the, the, the 200, but it's not a huge disparity because they're both very legible with the light that you have. So... Um, and I've heard the EL, the electroluminescent, um, sometimes those kind of, you know, they, they wear out a little bit faster than the LEDs. The LEDs seem to last a long, long time. So um, light, I think I'm going to go back and forth, probably give the slight edge to the 200 on this one. Uh, water resistance on this watch is 50 meters of water resistance, which is good. To me, 50 meters of water resistance is kind of the minimum. Like you get that, you can pretty much do what you want with this, except the really deep stuff jumping off cliffs because the water pressure hitting the watch, you may force water into places that uh, the watch isn't designed for that. Uh, but just regular swimming and messing around, you know, Casio says you can't, I've never seen anybody with a 50 meter water resistant Casio have any issues with swimming. So that's my experience. That's what I would do with it. That's what I'll do with this one is I will definitely take this out swimming, no problem. I don't think there's ever gonna be an issue with it. Now, if I have an issue with it, it's $27, I'm not out. A huge sum of money as a result of that. The the 200 is not that cheap, so the 200's got a few more bucks behind it. So a little bit more cautious about that one. Although that one is 200 meters of water resistance, so that really should not be an issue at all. Okay. All right. So now let's go to the comparisons. When it comes down to these two, let's start off with the display. This is the biggest thing. When I did the review on this one, check out the review of the WV the WV 200. I was not a fan of this watch, and primarily because of the display, the way that they lay things out in these top two sections, it's just too small. Like, why would you, why would you give up that much real estate in this round, whatever this this indicator is over here? You've got all of these lines separating these sections. Get rid of those lines and, and combine them together, and use the space a little bit more efficiently. Especially if you want to put all that information on there. And when you look at this, they both have about the same size display when it comes down to the dimensions across the top and down the side. But the layout is just, for some reason, it is just so much more efficient on the 58, I think. Look at the, the size difference on the time display. Massive difference on the time display. Look at the, the date and month. Much, much easier to read on the 58 than on the 200. Now, the day of the week, I'm going to say it's pretty close. It's pretty close between those two, if you ask me. So as far as display goes, it's definitely going to go to the 58 on here. Light, slight edge on the 200. Overall size, you know, you're going to have a much lighter watch. Uh, it's a lower profile out of the 200. Um, if you're looking for a more rugged watch, if, if looks are important for you, then you might go with the 200 just for that reason alone. Better strap on the 200, okay? You got that ratcheting strap on here. You don't have that. You have a smooth... Uh, inside to the uh, strap on the 58. Um, overall, I think there's there's just a lot of great things about both of these watches. Now, let's go through the modes, all right? World time. This is actually world time. When you set this up, uh, this goes back to your home time and adjusts accordingly, um, unlike the, the review on the other throwdown video that I did uh, with the HDC 700. You actually have to program the time in here. You put the city in, and then you go back up here to the time, and you program the time. You don't have to do it once, but at the same time, it's like, ah, you know, that's kind of a hassle. All right. Timer, nice timer, um, straightforward timer on that one. Stopwatch, you got the lap, you got the alarm function on here, all the basics on here. Now, on the on the 200, 
Let's go through this. You have the world time, same deal. Put punch in the city and it adjusts it for you. You've got the timer function. You've got the stopwatch function. You've got the alarm function. So really as far as function goes, you're not going to see huge differences between these two. Uh, but as far as price goes and the value of that, um, if you're really into a heavier duty watch, the 200 meters of water resistance, a better strap, and the EL light, which I'm not, I don't think it's a huge advantage, but I'm going to give it a slight advantage just because the light is so even across the display, then the 200 is your deal. If you're looking for something that gets you all those things and everything works, all right, you want the Toyota Corolla, you don't need the Ferrari, okay, you want the Toyota Corolla, then you go with this one, I think. I think the WV58R is the way to go. Now, the WV58A, which is the one I thought I was buying, um, that one actually has the electroluminescent light. So overall, you know, the you got the atomic timekeeping. That's the big thing between these. That's why they're called the Wave Scepter. Uh, they pick up the atomic signal, and the watch is spot on. It, it does the checking at least once a day, and you've got yourself uh, a watch that's always accurate, right? So overall, I'm going to give this throwdown to the 58R because I think this is the one that... Uh, you know, dollar per uh, function, value, that whole thing. I think this is the better value watch overall. It's not a huge difference. The 200 is a great watch. A lot of people like this watch. Um, I don't think the, the folks that have this watch have reading glasses, if you ask me. The folks that have reading glasses probably are going to choose this one. So there you go. Put the comments down below. If you haven't visited my online store, I do have a number of Casios for sale there that I've reviewed. And because I can't keep them all, I'll put them up for sale along with a bunch of other watches for the same reason. I just can't keep them all. I put them on sale on the uh, realidealgear.com store. So check that out, realidealgear.com. Let me know what you think of the comments down below this video. And there you go. My name is Tim. This has been another Real Ideal Gear Review. We'll catch you guys next time.